just everything about what we do. It's uh, it's so important. Oh, I had a little interruption there. Sorry about that. Um, to get into the right mind frame about changing habits, good for bad, because the reason that most advisors, and there's always an exception to the rule, right? But the reason most advisors don't have more appointments is because they don't realize they've attracted more appointments than they currently are having. They simply didn't retain them. Something in their process well before that phone call got to them or well before that email got to them interested somebody they were referred by somebody something happened and there was interest created and people started down your path as i call it but actually got stopped before they even made contact with you so a lot of what advisors do wrong they know they do wrong but a lot of the damage, if you will, a lot of the lost leads that you have in your practice, you actually lose with ever knowing that you were going to have them in the first place. So you don't realize how critical it is to fix some of the things that we're going to talk about today. So the 20 tips that I'm going to give you today are all about that. It's about really changing the way you think about things and do business. I'll give you practical stuff, but, but I'm going to give you some philosophy as well. Now, if you're looking for quick answers today, if you were hoping this is a 25 appointment a lead system and I'm going to explain it to you and then tomorrow you're going to start it and then the next day you're going to have leads, this is the wrong call. And so uh, go on with your day. Do something different because you're going to be very dissatisfied at the end of this call. And if you're a competing FMO, IMO, BD, and you thought you'd just come on here and see if this is a new widget that you could give to your advisors in the field. This is the stuff you've been telling them forever. Um, it's just maybe some philosophy or assistance in helping them actually start to take that advice rather than not take that advice. So we're going to cover a lot of ground, but that's, uh, that's what we're up to today, Valentine's Day. And uh, I really, again, I appreciate your time. So I'll try to make sure that you walk away with a nugget. So now all i got to do is figure out how to advance my screen. There we go. So what I promised you on the invitation was we're going to talk about creating marketing processes that run without you, customer experience, things that you need to be doing that you may not be doing, how to get referrals the right way, marketing commodity services. Easy marketing means that you give the masses things that they desire. You don't chase them down and try to give them something they don't desire. You give them something they do desire. Um, data mining, some of the best ways to do simple data mining and repurposing of leads, kind of the same thing. We're going to talk a lot about video marketing and we're going to talk a lot about social media marketing. So that's our agenda for today and I keep my promises. Um, every organization of men, be it a social organization or a political organization, ultimately relies on man's capacity for making promises and then keeping them. So at our companies, we keep our promises. And we're going to give you this stuff, and we really hope it's going to help. But I'm going to ask you for something in return. This is going to be interactive. You have to participate in order to really get what you need to get out of this call today. So everybody needs to have a piece of paper and a pen. Actually, you want two pieces of paper and a pen. So uh, I will wait a second. I mean, you're really going to need this because we're going to go fast. We're going to cover a lot of stuff. You're going to make some quick notes, and those notes are going to serve you in the next day or two to bring you back to what we were talking about. So get some paper, two different pieces, get a pen, and be ready. All right? And I'm also going to actively talk with you in the, in the questions queue. So as you guys are posting and gals information uh, or asking things, then we're going to uh, – uh, we're going to try to interact as much as possible. So Wise is asking, uh, always have that for these. Um, not quite with you there. Will this be sent out as a replay? Um, I don't know what um, Insurance WebEx is going to do with this. I would assume they are going to replay it. Um, and I really appreciate their organization for having me 
uh, mentor for them, and I think a lot of the work that they're doing out in the field, a lot of the sharing and educating they're doing is really worthwhile. I don't know if you've been on a lot of the Insurance WebEx uh, invitations, but the ones that I've attended, I've, I've walked away with good stuff. So um, I would assume they're going to send this out in replay, but I can't say for sure. All right, so everybody's had a second for that. So I'm going to start with the frogs and the lily pad story, but you know this is the deal. All things that are worthy in life are hard. And if you're a young man or a young woman, it's a little easier to go forward because you haven't really developed bad habits. But if you're older like me, not only is it hard to go forward, but it's also much harder because you've got baggage, you've got old habits that you need to get rid of. There's only so much room in your head. There's only so much that you can do in a day, and if you're carrying around a lot of bad habits, the likelihood of having new habits develop is even harder. So, you know, how many times have you said to yourself in the last year, I need to take off a few pounds, right? But you're still wearing the same size clothes, or, you know, I need to drink a little less. Maybe a beer and then a soda, and then a beer and then a soda, instead of four beers. But then the game comes and goes, and the whole six-pack went, and, and like usual, right? Or you know, I need to go to the gym a little more often, or I need to go to the gym at all. Um, you know, it's easy to say to yourself over and over again, I need to make these changes, and then 20 years goes by, and you're earning what you're earning now instead of twice as much or three times as much. So my hope today is to give you the right way to get new habits, and it's my own version of a 21-day program, but here's the deal. You've heard that myth, right? It takes 21 days to develop a new habit and doing the same thing over and over again. And that's actually, it is a myth. It, it doesn't take 21 days. It's a lot harder than that. So that whole 21 day things came from a misrepresentation of this Dr. Maxwell Malt work on self-image. And he did a study. That was a little piece of it. He made some references to it. And, and all of a sudden, people were so... Um, enamored with the idea of having an easy way to create a habit that they started passing around as a humor. And, I mean, they had a rumor, and it's huge. Now, people actually think that 21 days to fix new habit is a thing, and it's never been. So here's the real process as far as I'm concerned, and this was uh, in writing by Jason Fleck, and I, I wholly agree it was in Forbes magazine. You've got to go through three phases to form a new habit. Number one phase is easy. It's the honeymoon phase, right? You, you go to a seminar, you come on a call like today, you get motivated, and you think, all right, I'm going to do this new thing, and this is going to be easy to do, and you've got this gumption, and you're ready for positive change in your life, and so that's the easy phase, right? Then the hard part is reality. You start digging into the nuts and bolts and trying to do that different thing, and it's a struggle. And it, the old habits are right around the corner. So all of a sudden, you're, you're bogging down. So you're in what we call the fight through. You've got to know I've got to fight through this falling out of love, the honeymoon period's ending, and this is just hard, and, I, you know, I don't know. You've got to fight through that. You have to physically say out loud to yourself, I am right now needing to be in my fight through. I need to fight through. I am going to have this new habit. I am going to have this new practice in my office, this new lead system, this new hard thing to do. I'm going to master this. So I just have to fight through this. And you have to recognize that you're in a fight through. And you're going to have to do that sometimes two, three, even four times, saying to yourself, all right, I'm still in that fight through because this is just getting harder every day and I just don't even know if I can do this, but I'm going to push through and I'm going to make it happen for myself. And then more importantly, I think the emotional questions you need to ask yourself, so this is the first thing I think you should write down. I'm in the fight through. How will I feel if I do this? You actually have to get to the point where you say to yourself, all right, I'm in the fight through. This is a struggle. It's not working. How am I going to feel if I work through this and complete this thing I'm taking on? And you have to emotionalize, you have to take in the emotional part of it. I'm going to feel really good if I do this. So yeah, of course it's harder than hell right now, but I am, I, it's going to be so joyous for me. And you've got to let yourself really feel 
the possibility of true joy. And then you have to use the negative as well. How am I going to feel if I don't do this, especially when you've already started digging into a new marketing system? Let's say you decided that you're going to use a small business owner lead program and it's telemarketing. And the telemarketers are making appointments for you and you're going to go out and start making calls on those businesses. And it was described to you as the easiest thing in the world to do, and the businesses are all around you. So you get out there, and, and you're up in New England. Yesterday, we had 40 inches of snow in Bangor, Maine, 40 inches in one day, fourth ever record. And so you can't call in the business that day. And then the next day, they're all dealing with their broken equipment, and some of their employees still aren't in. And the next day, something else. And go day four, and you've yet to even talk to anybody. And you're like, oh, this isn't going to work. No, it's not going to work unless you go through the fight through, and then you ask yourself, how am I going to feel? And this is four days of four months of four years of the rest of my life. I'm going to make this program work. I'm not quitting just because the weather got bad and things got scripted. I'm not even going to set it aside. I'm going to master this now. How good am I going to feel when I master this and I have these many appointments with this many people? And you have to actually write this stuff down on paper, and you have to think about it and fight through the fight through. So last on this, and then I'll move it along, life projection is really important. You have to say to yourself, how's my office going to look down the road five years if this change permanently goes into effect? And you're going to say, well, let's see, I'll have stopped doing dinner seminars completely. Imagine what your life would be like if you never had to do another seminar ever because the business owner lead program is working so well. Oh my, the free time I'm going to have is going to be amazing. I'm only going to be working nine to five. I'm going to be working with people that do premium of hundreds of thousands of dollars as a target premium at a time. This is going to be incredible. You have to internalize how awesome your life's going to be three years out, five years out because of what you're going to start and then fight through today, right? This is what it takes to really beat habits, and it's not for the weak of heart. And you can do it. Anybody that's fought through studying for their insurance exam or the securities exam can use the same technique to fight through all of the things that you need to change in your office. And I'm about to unload on you a lot of your trash. And I just want you to post in the Q&A, tell me if I'm wrong as I start laying out your trash. Because it all needs to get fixed. It's all very human. Most everybody needs to fix these same things. And, and it, takes, it takes changing old habits for new. And that is a lot harder than what people think. So don't let the discouraged monster get you. Don't let disruptions get you. You've got to have that real power and fire in your belly that once you say, I'm going to change this habit, I'm going to replace it with this other habit, and then that has to be that. It's happening. And you have to do a lot of things to keep it that positive in your head. And that's a technique that all you'll find all wealthy people do, from a Donald Trump to anyone you've ever talked to that's got millions and millions or hundreds of millions or billions of dollars. They've been in the fight through. They've recognized it's the fight through. They've, they've taken to heart that they are going to accomplish these things. And they just don't ever quit until it's accomplished. And they make those decisions before they even start. That is something that is not unique in wealthy circles. It is one of the recipes for what makes a successful person successful. So that's all the feng shui time I'm going to spend on habits. But you really got to understand what we're going to do here. We're going to tell you today how to change habits. And those habits are going to generate more leads because you're going to stop throwing leads away that are getting thrown away right now, and you just don't even realize it. You're going to have more people to see and more success at what you're doing with lots of little things. It's, um, it's really quite easy in the grander scale of things. So first, this is habit number one. You have to put the future you on your calendar. So just admit to yourself right now, how busy are you now, right? Every day gets filled up and it goes by and there's never enough time, right? So how much more busy are you going to be trying to change bad habits and exchange them for good ones? 
and when did you ever get anything done that wasn't a hard date on your calendar, right? Most of us would set a, a date for a seminar and it's okay, it's three Fridays from now and they drop mail and they spend money and it's a commitment and then all of a sudden two days before the seminar is the first time they're open the power pack to try to learn the script. But it's that fact that, hey, it's tomorrow that actually finally forces someone to stay up from 7 o'clock at night until 2 in the morning reading the slides. You know, so it's that hard date on the calendar. So I'm going to get some hard dates on your calendar right now, and they're some of the most important hard dates that you've ever had in your life, and they're not going to sound like it today. You're going to look back six months from now and say, that was the smartest thing I've done in my career in five years. And it's putting time for the 20 tips I'm going to give you today on your calendar. Open it up. I'm not kidding. Open your calendar. Put a date with yourself on your own calendar. And I don't care if you call it the tips hour and you make it every Thursday at 2 or every Monday at 5 or whatever you have to do. But if you're going to change anything in your office, let alone 20 little things, you need to dedicate the time that it's going to take as a hard appointment on your calendar that you will not take off until all 20 tips are completed. And that means you have to give the world the time. You have to give yourself the time. Here's going to be the hardest one. You want to do something that gets an appointment in your office tomorrow, right? Uh-uh. You have to start with the foundational stuff. Your first appointment is going to be reading three or four essential books if you haven't read them already. And I'm going to give them to you today throughout this presentation. These books are foundational. They're core. You'll never find somebody that's extremely successful that didn't come from the Wharton School of Business that hasn't read these books. So maybe you're going to go, yep, read it, read it, okay. But if you haven't, these are crucial and they're things you need to write down. Right? So number one is the E-Myth, whether it's the E-Myth or the E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. This book is all about automating your business and having it run without you. And this is the foundational go forward for your office and your day being full every day. Your office running like an office, like a doctor's office. You've got five appointments every single day and you don't know where they came from because it's got nothing to do with you. You're not in charge of your marketing. Your staff is and so on. And yes, of course, you might be a lone cowboy right now on this call, but how are you going to get to that three full-time staff that do nothing but take care of your 25 appointments a week. You're going to get there by hiring one part-time staff person sometime this year, but making their time effective and making money because of them and then affording to take them full-time and then hiring the second and et cetera. And yeah, it might be two years or three years from now before you're at the point that you're going to need to be at. But you're not going to get there by wishing if you don't start, you'll never get there. So this book is going to be your foundation. Now, you're going to have to take time to read this. If you're a reader, if that's no problem, great. But be honest with yourself. So few financial advisors take the time to educate themselves on anything other than industry jargon. And these foundational things go by the wayside, and they're critical. So what you're going to learn when you read that book is, if, you're, if you own a small business, you've got three types of personalities out there in the world. You've got the entrepreneur, it's usually you. You've got the manager, and then you've got the technician. And the people you hire in your office need to be opposing skill sets to yours. So if you're the entrepreneur, you're going to need to hire the manager, and you're going to need to hire the technician. If you're the manager, you're going to need to hire the entrepreneur and the technician. But you're going to have to understand these three people and what role they play in every company, and you're going to have to make this part of your ongoing philosophy. Another book you're going to have to absolutely read is From Good to Great by Jim Collins. And this book is going to give you courage and fill in a lot of blanks about things people don't understand. In business, it's all about running a business till it's a flywheel that is rotating on its own. So you get a business going, a lead system going, you're out there working the lead, you're knocking on the doors, it's not running without you, that's not a flywheel. 
a flywheel is I walk into my office, I ask my staff member, how many appointments do I have today? She says five and she hands me the first dossier. I have no idea where these people have come from because all of the marketing I'm involved in and all of my staff does has made our office into a flywheel. And every day is busy. And all day, every day is busy. And the office runs with or without me. It runs better with me, but it runs without me. All of that's going to come from the EMIS Foundation, and you're going to realize with good to great how that flywheel is supposed to look. And you may be encouraged, but almost every awesome company in America, from Ford Motor Company to GE to on and on and on, almost every one of them was on the pinnacle of disaster, days from closing, totally bankrupt before they broke through. And if you've ever found yourself in those positions or you feel like you're headed to those positions, of course, no great company has ever become great without going through that process. Never. So it is part of your foundational knowledge you absolutely have to have. Now, there's two books. Well, that's no big deal, right? Don't procrastinate this. Order them today. Go on Amazon, get the book, get the recording of the book, but get them coming and then go into your calendar and put in the 20 tips hour. Find a time for it. And then I don't care if your office is exploding and bleeding at the gills. If you made an appointment yourself for Wednesday at 2 o'clock, you're going to read that book for at least an hour no matter what. And that's the only place it fits into your life. Then do it. If you say, oh, no, I'll read that at home, then you've got to put it on your calendar at 7 o'clock at night at home Wednesday after I've put the kids to bed. I am going to read that book for an hour. If you don't put it on your calendar and you just put it in the giant pile of things that might happen someday, you're never going to change your life. You have to do this stuff the way a machine does it. I'm going to promise myself I'm going to put it in my calendar, and this stuff is going to now happen, and I'm going to be accountable to it. This is a new habit, a new me. I'm going to fight through this, but I am now going to learn, change, and do everything I ever dreamed about doing for myself. This day forward is the new me, and that's how you get this stuff done. So are you ready? I want you to take out your paper. I want you to put two things at the top of the paper, do or delegate. Now, here's the deal. If you put it in, I'm going to do it pile, then you have to put the time you're going to do it on the calendar. No BS. If you're saying, oh, I'm going to do that, good. Go put it on the calendar. Oh, no, I'll just get on the week. No, not on the weekend, not just, uh-huh, mm. If it's, oh, you're going to do it on the weekend? Then go put it on your calendar on Sunday and tell your wife, sorry, can't go shopping with you Sunday because I have this work thing I'm going to do. Be responsible for it, right? Now, a lot of things might go into delegate. You can only delegate to your staff or people around you if you give them a clear expectation of the deadline that you need. So. Here's the problem with most advisors, the way they delegate. They've got a very awesome staff person, and they just throw a ton of stuff at them. And that staff person juggles things, and they go, oh, never mind that. Now we've got to do this. Oh, never mind this. Now we've got to do that. And that staff person is overwhelmed all the time. And it, it's, a, it's a common dynamic, and it's, it's a part of being an A-type personality, and you are the entrepreneur, and they are the, the, the manager. They're the ones that are taking care of that flow in the office. And that's all fine. but so what you have to do is add to yourself, I won't give them this to do without an absolute firm date of when I expect it back. Because that little missing piece that we don't give our staff people allows them to prioritize according to either what's easiest for them to do or what they feel is the most urgent. But in your mind, you might not have shared with them things that are more urgent. Like if you said to them, hey, look, go get uh, the e-myth by Mike Gerber on Amazon. That's it. And then a couple days later, you say, did you order that book for me? And they go, oh, no, I haven't done that yet. And then a couple days later, you go, hey, did you ever get that book? And they go, oh, no, I haven't done that yet. So that's not how you delegate. You delegate by saying, would you go on Amazon and order the e by Michael Gerber? By the end of today, 
I want that book ordered. I want it here on Wednesday. And then they're going to say, I've already got enough on my plate. Okay. What's on your plate that you feel is urgent that has to get us to today? Well, you told me to do this, and you told me to do this, and you told me to do this. Ah, that third thing I told you to do, that's a month's month project for me. I mean, that can just get worked on any time. I'd rather have the book. So when you delegate, you have to delegate only with a clear expectation of the task completion date. From now on, every time you delegate anything, it will improve your office staff communication unbelievably. And you'll be surprised how many more things are getting done and how many more things are getting sold when you do that. Hey, Kevin, you're jumping in here and asking, where's the third book? Oh, believe me, there's going to be a third and a fourth. <laughs> so hang on. Excuse me. All right, so do and delegate on a piece of paper, but the rules are you don't put on do unless it goes on your calendar as soon as you put it on the do list. And delegate, you delegate, but you never delegate without a clear completion date. And that's a new habit you have to adopt from now on. And it will take time for you to break through those habits. And when you say, oh, reading, I'm too busy, well, they've got these things called books on tape now. So I'm reading this book, The Seven Habits of Effective People by Steve Covey. And I am too busy to read, so I Someone says, hey, have you read this book? And I go, no, is it good? And they say, yep. And I go, oh, okay, I'm, I've decided I'm going to read this book. I ordered the CDs, and I play them in my car on the way to the office. And, yes, I put in my calendar, time to the office, 35 minutes. I will listen to this book. I go in and put it in my calendar so that the night before I see it's there, the morning when I open my calendar to review my day, I see it's there. Then I jump in my car, and I take it out of my briefcase, and I put it in the player instead of forgetting about it and listening to the morning news on the way to work. Live in your calendar. Make appointments with yourself for everything that's important. And doing all the stuff we're going to talk about today is going to hopefully become more and more important. So do and delegate, do and delegate, do and delegate. Everything I'm going to tell you from here on out, you put it on one side of the list or the other. right? So customer experience. Many of you are still using forms that you created for customer experience two years ago, three years ago, five years ago, however often ago it was. And that's fine, except people's lives are changing at the speed of light, and you're totally alienating a way a lot of customers would like to deal with you, and you're making a lot of referrals not happen. So here's my, at the family office, intake, and you'll see that I start off by asking, are you a natural person? Or are you a trust? Are you an FLP? Are you the grantor? Are you a general partner? Why do I ask all this stuff at the top? Because I want that person to understand that these are all areas of comfort for me, and that's either going to impress them or make them realize that maybe I'm even a greater advisor than what they were told. If you're not living in this kind of environment, how are you getting people to go, oh, you deal with trust? Or, oh, um, I'm a general partner in a partnership and, right? So does your form just say, what's your name? You're missing marketing opportunities, right? So what's that highest target client that you constantly want in your office? And what are the things that they're likely involved in that tie in? And where are those things on your intake form on page one, right? The other thing is the way we communicate. We're telling people, what's your phone number? Well, that's great, except I haven't answered my phone when it rang in five years now. I let things go to voicemail. They have a very low priority. What is somebody going to do if they want to get a hold of me right now? They're going to text me. That's how my wife gets a hold of me. That's how my staff gets a hold of me with an emergency, right? So does your form... When you talk to your prospects and suspects, ask, what's your home phone? I'm about to take that off. Nobody's got a home phone anymore. So cell phone, work phone, email. Email's dead. Nobody's answering emails anymore. That's an end of the day, maybe every three days. So you've got to ask, how do you want to communicate? Do you text? Yes or no. Do you use Twitter? Yes or no. If you do, what's your Twitter at? Do you use LinkedIn? You've got to ask about all of the different social medias 
and find out how they want to hear from you. And hey, if they want to be poked on LinkedIn instead of call and you don't have on your form and you're trying to call them and you're leaving voicemails, what's happening? Nothing. Nothing in your office. And then after a couple of weeks, you're chasing that prospect and, and they were a hot life lead when you got them from your friend and you talk to them once on the phone and then all of a sudden you're going to follow up with them and then you send them a whole bunch of emails and then you try to call them again and there's nothing. All of that could have been avoided if you'd simply ask, do you text? And they said yes. And you say, is it okay if I text you? I guarantee you, you could have texted them three days ago and they would have answered in all oh, five minutes. Right? So you're going to go throw all your old forms in the trash and rethink them because the world changed. And people are communicating on over 20 different platforms. And you've got to ask them where they're communicating in order to know where to communicate with them. Because forcing them to go back to home phone, forcing them to go back to email, when they've given those processes up, is just going to be a deficit for you. And uh, so you fix that on your collection forms. Today, marketing is much like this old game they used to have called Mousetrap. And it never did work very well, but I think that's the point. You had to set up all these really cheap plastic, probably made overseas somewhere, parts, and it was a bathtub and a ramp and a ladder and this little marble, and you got it to go around. And in TV commercial, it went all the way around, and it made this mousetrap come down on the mouse. In reality, you'd set the game all up, and you'd put the ball on, and it would go down the ladder, and then go onto the ramp, and fall off the ramp. And then you'd go to pick it up, to put it back on the ramp, and you'd accidentally knock the ramp off with your hand because the cardboard holes weren't very good. Then you'd spend five minutes putting the game back together again, and then you'd get it to go past the ramp and into the chute, but then it would fall off the end of the chute. I don't know if I ever got the ball to go from the start of the game to the end more than once. That's the way marketing is now in your office. It used to be, I'll be on TV or radio or newspaper, and that's it. It's all about social media. It's all about video marketing. It's all about hundreds of touches coming from different directions, and you've got to be set up to play this game with every one of your clients, and you have to have a process for it. You might call a client. They want a confirming email of an appointment, but the email, they want a text alert, and then after they get the text alert, then they're going to message you on Facebook. Link, the link, the link, the link. And if you don't do any one of those parts in the process, you're going to lose the lead. Or you're going to lose the speed of the lead, which often kills the deal. Right? So you've got to get with it. Then you're going to have to totally rate yourself on a scale from 1 to 10 on all of the different services that you currently are comfortable serving and all of the things that you're not comfortable serving. So this is a, a cheat sheet. I'll give you a chance to get this off a website online. Um, rate yourself on fixed annuities on a scale from 1 to 10. Are you a 5? Are you an 8? Are you a 10? Um, Long-term care, universal life, charitable trust, reverse mortgages. You need to know exactly where you fall on every one of the standard skills that an advisor has today. And if you're in the advanced game, the advanced skills. And on the fixed side, on the standard skills, if you have any score in here that's less than a six, then that becomes the next priority of the 20 tips. It's what you put on your list of things to do next. Because the reason that some of your marketing isn't getting more success is because you're lacking the ability to have a conversation with somebody. You get them to that critical point. You're doing a social security seminar. And you've got one of the people in the audience asking a question and he asks you something about a reverse mortgage, and you go, oh, I don't know anything about those. Dead. Or the same seminar, and you're talking to someone, and they say, well, my wife and I have a trust, and da 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 Do you think that, uh? And you go, oh, yeah, um, well, I've got this attorney that I, I send people to for stuff like that, and uh, dead. So six or higher in every category here, or the next thing you need to do to have 25 leads a month forever is to put on your calendar. I'm going to read some books, and then I'm going to spend three weeks in a charitable trust course. I'm going to spend two weeks in a reverse mortgage course. I'm going to spend seven weeks in my tax course. 
I am going to get every one of these skills to a six, whichever one is my lowest score is next. I have to be this well-rounded, six or better across the board, or I'm leaking leads out the left and right side of my ship. It's not that you need a way to shove 25 new prospects a, a month forever into your office and into your processes. It's that you need to stop alienating all the ones that you already are getting at bats at, and some of them die before they even get to you because of these kinds of holes and situations. With the DOL and everything that's happening, we're all going to be expected to be very well-rounded and ultimately someday fiduciaries. Maybe not today or tomorrow. We'll see how this all shakes out still. But one way or another, the one thing that's for sure is everybody's got to step up their game. So just self-assess and write this on your paper. I am the strongest at blank for marketing. What is the thing you do the best at marketing? And the thing I'm the weakest at is blank. And I ask you to ask yourself, is selling for you a hunt and peck process or a true gardening process? Where you do what you do day in and day out and the office is always full and there's always plenty of activity. That's a gardening type office. It's what everybody wants. Very few people have, most people have hunt and peck. But write down and admit to yourself where you stand and then list all the marketing that you're currently doing that you can delegate. Now, you don't have to write these all down now, but this is part of your self-awareness for at the end of this call, right? You're gonna create some new habits. And you came onto this saying, I want 25 prospects a month forever then you have to delegate your marketing processes to people that do it with you sometimes and for you most of the time. All of my marketing processes are things that I'm not directly involved in and most successful advisors that is the case. Other than an occasional um, client appreciation event, I don't make my reign, my processes make my reign. And so if what you've listed here in list marketing I can do truly on my, I can delegate, what you've listed there is none, then you're going to stop doing all of that in the next 12 months. And you're going to write in the replacement. What can I do that is delegatable that's going to be as successful as what I'm doing now or better? Because there are plenty of things that meet that category. You have to be willing to delegate and let your office run without you in order to scale it up. So this is a, a comment that was said recently at a broker-dealer event, and it's just the way the world is going to be going here. In the old world, we gave away planning, we gave away advice, and we sold products. In the new world, we're going to get paid for giving the advice and the planning, and we're going to have to give away the product. There's going to be so little commission left. There's going to be so little way to get paid left in those things. You're going to have to have an office where you can solidify charging fees, not even AUM, just fees for giving insurance advice, fees for giving planning advice. And believe me, that may sound hard for you. It's happening all around you, all over the place. I myself, a minimum client comes in here. They're paying me $1,000 a month for 18 months or we're not even talking. And that's nothing to do with commission. And people agree to it all day, every day. So you can get yourself to a new world and a new place in your head. It's going to take time. I'm not saying you hang up this phone and then that's your new parameter. I'm saying is you can get there and it is the way the world is going, but you're going to have to learn how to do the things that we're talking about today. Delegating, building your office, et cetera. So I'm not going to go into the DOL stuff. Because I'm lagging, which I do. I'm very passionate about making people successful. It's what I do. And so I am belaboring. So I will try to speed it up. Um, so now you need to self-assess your team. All your referrals are going to come from an attorney, a tax office, a mortgage lender, a stockbroker if you're not one, a health insurance specialist, and a third-party TPA. In our office, we don't have to ask our clients for referrals. We get plenty of referrals all day long every day from all sorts of industry connections that we have. 
how you build these networks takes time and effort, and we're happy to share you that time and effort, show you exactly how to do that. But this is the way referrals really work. You have to set up referral machines. So you only take care of the machine, and then the machine sends referrals. It's not you go out and ask your clients for referrals, because then that's you having to do work over and over again, one by one. It's you going to a nursing facility and setting up with the administrator a reason, a story, and a process for them to send you three families a week from now on. Then you do it at a second facility. Then you do it at a third facility. All of a sudden, you've got 20 leads a month coming in, and you're only babysitting four people by stopping by with coffee or donuts once in a while. That's a referral machine. And you get them in several different industries, and it's very easy to keep them running. Little effort on your part. And it's not networking, per se, wise. It's, it's giving people a process to follow where they are going to send you leads and they know why. And you're not asking for anything from them. You're not asking to work their book. That's more networking, right? You go to the lawyer and you say, you send me your clients and I'll say, no, you're going to go to the lawyer and you're going to say, you send me these kinds of people when you run across them. Not your clients, the people that you're running across that you haven't engaged as a client because those are very easy for that attorney to give up. And when you give them a remuneration and a process to follow for those rewards, they will monetize it. So it's, it's a little different than networking, but same idea. So if you don't have those parties in your office, you're, you can double the number of referrals and leads you have in a simple year by doing two out of five. And it doesn't really take that much effort. Maybe that goes on your calendar as your next due. I'm going to read those books, and then I've already got a six or higher on my scoreboard, so I don't need to make that next. So next is I'm going to put in two of the six referral partners that I need, and, and I'm going to turn on these referral machines. But if you're missing a piece, it's just like taking that piece out of the mousetrap game. Once the ball goes down the ramp, if the little pedestal thingy isn't sitting there ready to catch the ball, it just rolls off the board. You have to have all those people in place if you want marketing to be the easy part of your day. Doing this is hard. Guess what you'll have to do if it's hard? Decide you're going to do it. Say it's a new habit. I am going to get these people in place. Go through the fight through. Know you're in the fight through. Write down, how am I going to feel when I have an attorney sending me three non-clients a month? How am I going to feel if I don't get it done? Work through the real work of creating a new habit, not just, oh, it'll only take me 21 days. <clears throat> right? This isn't kid stuff. This is business. You can make a million dollars a year if you just get around to doing it. Right? So you've got a lot of work to do in your office. Simple tools people don't get around to doing. Not super high priority. But if you don't have uniform letterhead that's pre-printed on nice London paperwork when you send somebody a communication, maybe you don't get the referral that you would have gotten if you did. If you haven't gotten around to authoring a book, you can dictate a book. I dictated too, driving to work on naturally speaking. Right? Turn on the phone. What did I put in my calendar? I'm going to write this book. 30 minutes at a time during my drive for the next three months. And guess what I did for three solid months every single morning? And then sent it off to a ghostwriter who compiled it. Voila. Right? How you get around to this stuff isn't dream. Someday I'll do that. You go put it on your calendar tomorrow morning. And you start. That's how it gets done. Not wishes, not hopes, planning. Put it on your calendar. Make it an appointment. Chip away at the stone, one day at a time. And yes, of course, it'll all take time. i got to do so much here, I'm overwhelmed. Now I can't do any of it, right? No, just pick the next most important thing and start. And when it's finished, then the next. If you do everything I talked about on the call today, you're going to have 
all the appointments you could ever need for your whole life in a very remarkable short period of time. I've seen it happen over and over and over again. But it's not a marketing system. It's a damn reality check. Are you ready to get out of your own way and actually make yourself wildly successful and not just successful? Because all it takes is the guts to do the simplest thing, but work through the hard part. So, high quality logos, reactive websites, mission statements, this is really where we need to spend the rest of our time. I'm going to skip through some of this. Your website. Video marketing is automated marketing. I get more than 25 leads a month every single month, have for years and years. For an animation campaign I built one time at the cost of $2,700, and it now just lives on its own. We send out emails, we send out text blasting, we get out messaging, and no matter how somebody comes across our message, they're given a link, and they click that link, and they get a 60-second video. And that video is a teaser. It asks them to opt in, and it takes them to a two or three minute video, which is another teaser. It builds on the story and it makes them really interested and offers them another video. And there's a seven minute story. And the seven minute story really tells the rest of the story. So I've got clients and prospects and suspects from all walks of life, all over the place, getting our messaging from the internet. It's nothing I'm doing anymore. It's being shared. Some of them have trended. And it was one $2,700 cost to build a video and the time to do it and the awareness that I wanted automatic marketing. And those leads come in and they come in and they come in. Then I built another campaign and now leads come in from that one and come in and come in. I'm currently working on my fifth. So automatic marketing, I want 25 leads a month forever. I want it to be delegatable. I want it to be something I don't have to do. You have to understand how powerful and what a completely disruptive thing the internet has become. Everything that you knew about marketing, you pretty much need to throw in the trash and start over. So, website. You have to have video on your homepage. Say it again, you have to have video on your homepage. If you do not have a YouTube channel and you do not have a video and that video does not represent what you do on your homepage of whatever your, your website looks like, then people are getting to your website by referral maybe. They're spending less than five to seven seconds on it and they're leaving your website and you're losing lead after lead after lead. And these are people, you never know you lost them. Your good friend, the dentist, who you did a good thing for him was having a cocktail party and talking to another dentist. And the other dentist said, what did you do about that? Da, da, da. And he said, oh, my insurance agent told me to do this. And I did it. And it worked out great. They say, oh, yeah, what's the name of your insurance guy? Oh, it's uh, Wealth Management, da, da, da. Okay. So he opens up his phone. And he goes to Wealth Management, da, da, da. And he hits star. Next day he's at his office, picks up his phone, hits that star, and he gets your website. And it's not a reactive website. So he's spreading it with his fingers to try to read the word. There's no video anywhere. And it's gone. And that lead would have been $40,000 of commission for you if you'd been a video button that he could have hit and played a 60-second video about you. Just that simple. It's happening day in, day out. If you don't have video on your website, you're kidding yourself. You're burning opportunity, right? So now once you get a website running right, you have video, there's lots of stuff behind the scenes. You've got to have a keyword rich website. And you have to use Google's keyword planner in order to embed them with the right kind of words. So when people search for you, they find you. You need to know what niching is. You need to know what your keyword density is of your website. You need to have a Facebook fan page. You need to have a Twitter account. You need to have a LinkedIn account. You need to have a YouTube channel. And all of this is, oh, to the young, you know, my clients, they don't do any of this stuff. That's the lie that you're telling yourself right now because you're too intimidated or afraid of what you're going to have to go through to learn this stuff. 
because it's absolutely monumental. Well, guess what? You don't have to lie to yourself anymore. All you have to do is go to the delegate side of your paper and write down full immersion in all social medias, complete understanding of marketing automation. And take your staff off doing your Allianz applications. Do those yourself and give the young person that's in your office the opportunity to go and tackle this world because you'll get 15 or 20 leads a month forever when they're done with it. And you can figure out how to fill out a 222 application one more time. Even though it's not your bread and butter, if you're intimidated about the social media, take a job away from a staff member, they're younger, they were born with an iPhone in their hand, and tell them, the next six months your job is going to be to learn all of this stuff and make me awesome. It's an absolute imperative. If you're not doing this stuff, you are disappearing off the face of the earth. You're dying. You're losing referrals. And I just can't say it strongly enough. Media itself, television, newspaper, they're all dying. Email is dying. People are tweeting and they're posting and they're, and they're vining and they're, yes, your client. How much do you text? How much do you get your wife to check things on her iPhone if you don't have one, right? Or husband, I'm being sexist. I'm just saying your better half. After all, it is Valentine's Day. We all have to think about our better half, right? So all of these things need to get done. And did you realize that as of 2013, the Internet officially is now browsed by mobile handheld devices more than PCs. That was four years ago. Is your mobile device in your hand and your mobile website awesome? Right? And yes, the people I'm talking about are retired. I have an 86-year-old woman yesterday that poked me on uh, LinkedIn, and then later we had a Skype, and she's worth $9 million. So, you know, if you're just saying, oh, well, my clients do this or that, no, those are the clients you've been able to find because you haven't been doing the stuff the rest of the world is doing. So the reason your clients don't do this and don't do that is because you don't do this and don't do that, and so that's where the only place you can find clients that don't do this and that is with people that don't do this and that. There's all sorts of advisors all around you dealing with even better clients and getting easier leads and getting them for free and getting mountains of business handed to them over the internet. It's like free television. I can't imagine how wonderful it is if back in the day when I was paying eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars to shoot TV commercials and buy airtime, all of that's free now. YouTube is free. Everyone's got their own TV channel and it's free. Are you putting out regular content on your free TV channel? I can't believe it if you're not. So do it. it. It's where the world went. It isn't where it's going. It's where it went. So you've got to get on board with all this stuff. My website used to look like the left side example, right? It's a text website. And now, somebody opens that on their mobile phone, it looks like the right side. There's a home button they can press. There's an about us button they can press. They all are fed with video. And they can click that bottom button to call me. This was a few years ago. This is now. Does your website look like this when you bring it up on your phone? If it doesn't, with these kinds of EV navigations and reactive to the device you're on, you're alienating, burning, and killing leads left and right. So who's going to set up your reactive mobile website? Are you going to do it? Or are you going to delegate it? Write it one place or the other. If you're going to do it, put it on your calendar. It's going to take hours and hours. But don't lie to yourself. Put the real time on your calendar. Not an hour next Thursday. Ten hours uh, talking to vendors. Five hours writing content. Six hours shooting video. So where is this 25 hours going in my calendar in the next three months? 
and then put every damn hour on your calendar with yourself. The only way it's going to get done is to get it done or delegate it. But if you delegate it, dear staff person, these are all the things I need to get done. I want to be involved in the content creation. We have suitability and compliance review. There's things that I do have to be involved in. But basically, I want you to do this, 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 and this. I want just to be brought into the loop and ask the imperative questions. Uh, we'll talk about where the website is at every Thursday at 4 o'clock until it's done. I want this done in three weeks and your budget is $6,400. That's how you delegate something. Not, hey, can you get this website done as soon as possible? I'll come up with the money for it. It's not how it works. It's not how successful people delegate tasks. Right? So this is a reality check. You need to get all this stuff completed. And video marketing, oh my goodness. Americans now own four digital devices on average, and the average U.S. consumer spends 60 hours a week consuming content across devices. 59% of viewers will watch a video to completion is if it's less than one minute. So imagine if every time you mailed a brochure to someone in the mail, or you sent the seminar invitation in the mail, that your read rate wasn't most of them going in the trash. It was 60% of every single mailer you send, the person gets it and reads the entire thing. How busy would your office be? It would blow your mind, right? They want the content this way. If you build the content this way, your office is going to get busy. So you just got to stop doing what used to work. And like it or not, join the world. Videos that generate great customer conversions are general marketing videos that allow to sell your company products or, or services, appointments, but again, less than a minute. Product or service demonstrations. Hi, I'd like to talk to you today about da-da-da and just stick to one thing that you do in your office and, and put it out of the YouTube. Expert interviews. Um, it's like a newscast. Hey, today we're going to talk about this office in Bangor, Maine because it's just so awesome or reputation videos. Hey, have you, do you know about blah, blah? Here's what other people are saying about blah, blah. These are all easy, inexpensive to shoot. We use a company in Alberta, Canada, and they do a complete start to finish video in the box, $297. And they're done in a week. So you could do 300, 600, 900, 1200. For less than $1,600, you could have five killer videos on YouTube. These are things you can shoot by email or text to people that call you and have interest, and you won't believe how fast they convert people that were somewhat interested in what you do or say. Boom, they'll be in your office. This is what you need to do. So again, do or delegate. Not think about, they need to get done. So are you going to do it, or are you going to delegate it to someone in your office? and then follow the rules of do or delegate. I hope your paper's getting pretty full. I know I'm running out of time. I haven't said everything I want to say, and that's almost always the case. So once you see someone that has a video on the Internet and they go search Google, guess what? The videos come up as an icon representation. Go Google yourself right now without video, and you'll see the, the standard three or four paper clicks on the top of the of the page, and then after that, there's the people that didn't pay, and those people that managed to get to the top of the page and not pay, they're winning, right? Well, the way to get there even faster is you post YouTube videos, and YouTube's smart enough, it talks to the internet, and the fact that you have a video comes up in a search of you. Guess what happens when someone searches a topic, and there's one video pay-per-click on that topic on the page they come up with? Boom. So you produce a cheap video, you put it on your YouTube channel, it's free, and then when people search you, however you're doing your marketing otherwise, kaboom. So you've got to have websites with video, and those websites have got to be set up to actually convert clients. When you're doing seminars, you've got to do seminars with social media content connected to the mailer. You do a mailer, great. 
but you also at the same time need to be on Facebook and all the social media pushes offering that same mailer to the same people, but through multiple platforms. I touched them in their mailbox, I touched them on YouTube, I touched them on Facebook. Because it's all three touches that finally get them to open one of the three. If you're just mailing, you're losing. You have to be mailing and posting. So that's how marketing becomes a commodity. I'm going to skip to the end. You've been generous with your time. I could give you some examples of commodity marketing, tax cuts coming soon to a theater near you, all sorts of things that you need to do. But mainly you need to do and delegate. Now here's that last book I want you to read. And it is Start With Why. Simon Sinek, S-I-N-E-K. And what you're going to learn if you read Start With Why is that most of us start getting away from telling people why we do what we do, and they start telling people what they do. It's a very common human problem to drift away from in our own practices you know, I was out there when I first started saying, we solve people's problems, we hug babies and love families, we do this, because we didn't have anything else to say. But we were out talking about our why. Why do we exist? Why is my office here? Why can my office help you? Instead, we slowly get busy and then we turn into what? We tell people what we do. I help people, you know, with safe money. I, I, with, I, I, I put people in trust and da da da. I what? I what? You tell them what you're going to do. It's a huge mistake. You need to get back to why I do what I do. So I'm going to end my call with the way I started it. My name's Paul Dyer. I'm from Vine Family Office. My wife and I own five companies. We own financial services companies, marketing companies. We do everything a family office does. And some of our companies serve financial advisors like you with the tools that we talked about today and the coaching. I'm not going to do a hard close on what I do as a mentor. You can go and find me if you really like what we had to say today. I don't need to give you a phone number or tell you to call me or go to my website. All you need to do is just go to vinefamilyoffice.com or any one of our company sites and check us out. And if you search the internet, you're definitely going to find who and what we are. We teach tax marketing, we teach automation of systems, and we coach to all of those processes. So today was a small bite about what we're all about. We help advisors turn their lives around, and the reason that we exist is because we were you. But we turned pro, and after we turned pro, our lives completely changed. And now I spend my time helping other advisors do what I did for myself. And I want to help you turn your practice into what you'd always actually thought about, dreamed about. And um, following these tips today will get you started. And if you need more help and you can't find it out there, then you can look for us and you'll find us. So happy Valentine's Day. Really appreciate your time. and. Uh, You've got do and delegate to go do. And don't forget to take care of your spouse at dinner tonight. Thanks for the time.